So, so we have to be careful. We have to be careful. We so we thank God. We thank God. We thank God this afternoon. Amen. Grace Church, are y'all excited today? Are y'all excited today? I was trying to get my I was trying to get my scene together with all these digital devices and everything. But God is good. God is good. God is good. Hey man, let's let's do this. Adam, give me some warfare, man. Give me some warfare. Cause you know, you know, you know, Adam, you know how we do it. How we do it. We, we now we out of, we out of Easter, right? We out of Easter, right? So come on, go ahead and praise him. Come on, praise him. Come on, here real quick. Let's just give God praise. I'm not gonna preach a long time. I promise you. I promise you, we're going on 957 today. We ain't talking about the real either. We talking about we going, we going, we going high. We going high. We going up.
it up right there. Let's give God the best praise. You can give him right there. We praise God. We praise God. Thank you, worship team. Thank you, worship team. Again, we are so excited and happy to be here at Grace Nation. We bless God for you on today. Come on, church. Give God praise for this church. Give God praise for this church. Come on, give God praise for your church. Spread the word. Let's give God praise with and for their church. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Yes. We thank you, Jesus. Oh yes. Come on, somebody just say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look, we we honor the Spirit of Christ in this house. We honor the leadership of this house. And we honor the senior leadership of this house. Everyone, let's give God a praise one more time for, for our pastor. Amen. Pastor Anthony Stephanie. Come on, y'all. Y'all can do really better than this. We can praise God. We can praise God for. There's nothing, there's nothing wrong with praising God for good leadership. We need to understand that. Good leadership is not easy to find. You can find a lot of preachers. But good leadership yes, is not easy to find. It's easy to find a preacher. It really is. Even in the city, it's easy to find a church. Sometimes I actually tell them I kind of feel like it might be too easy for people to find a church because they don't know a lot thing about stick to itiveness. Mm. And they don't know anything about a lot of things about faithfulness. Yeah. Yes. But because even though it's easy to find a church, it's not always easy to find your church. Right. Yes. It's not always easy to find the place you should be. Oh yes. It ain't always easy to do that. And so if you guys that are here and spreading the word at Grace Nation, those who may be watching online, it ain't always easy to find your thing. Right. Yes. And I'm going to go from natural then, uh, and because sometimes we try to oh, spiritualize things. How many of us only dated one person before you get married? I don't know how to find the light bulbs in here. Again. <laughs> Amen. Lights. Most of us dated more than one person. Yes. Before we found that person. Yeah, yeah. Am I, am I right, somebody? Well. It's, it's a rarity that you find somebody that was a high school sweetheart. Yes. And they was married until they was, they was in their 80s and all that kind of stuff. Matter of fact, I've been out of high school now. It'll be 34 years. Wow. I thought I, I, it, it dropped my memory back yesterday when we was driving down the street and we saw some people going on prom. And I was like, I remember my prom. And I was like, oh my God, I feel kind of ashamed that I remember my prom. <laughs> and I'm like, 34 years. And then I started saying, make it last forever. Because that was the name of our prom thing. My, 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 And I'm like, that, that song don't make no sense that that song would be around that long. But then I thought about it and said, it do make sense because I'm around that long. But part of what we are called to do and who we're called to be, we're called to find our thing, our church, our leader. And when we find that thing, we should not overlook that thing. We should be excited about that thing. We should be plugged and engaged in that thing. 
Because when we engage in it, then God can do something really, really powerful in our lives. Amen? Amen. So we again, y'all just give God praise again for Pastor Anthony Stephanie. Yeah. For all that, he, that the, all that God has called for him to do. Yeah. And for all that God has called for him to be. I'm honored and thankful to be able to stand here to be able to preach and I thank God, I thank you Grace Grace Church for saying to, to, if you want to give your pastor a break and allow him to go away because this has, this, this, this time in this year into the third year that we are in going through this, uh, this season and this pandemic it has not been an easy thing by any stretch of the imagination to be a pastor Pastoring is being reimagined. And some have said that's done, they're done. But when you have a pastor that's still trying to make things better, that's a blessing. That's a blessing. Last thing before we get into the word of God, again, I want to thank God for my wife uh, being with us on today, man. I bless God for her. She was out preaching this morning, threw me all off balance. She was out preaching this morning for one of the sons and daughters of our house. And uh, and so I'm thankful that she made it here today. Amen. Amen. And, and, and so I'm thankful for Apostle Regina Holiday. Amen. Can y'all give God praise for her? Amen. Y'all got to give up. Y'all got to give it to a better than that because you know, I got to go home with it. So come on, y'all give it to a better than that. Amen. Amen. And then she, she was preaching about guarding the anointing this morning. My God. She was preaching about guarding the anointing. She didn't know I was a fly on the wall. Even while I was preaching here. Even while I was preaching here and preaching that for our service this morning about getting back in the game. My about getting back in the game. But I got something to preach. What I told them this morning, I said, I ain't gonna cheat you. Come on, say somebody say, he ain't gonna cheat me. I ain't gonna cheat you. I ain't gonna cheat. That's why. That's why I run. And that's why I work out. I got plenty of energy. You probably see I got a little energy left, right? <laughs> Acts chapter number twenty-seven, verses forty-two through forty-four. Pastor, how long do you normally preach? Uh, how we go? How we go? Okay, how we go? How we go? I just want to be in the word. I should have asked you that before. I'm sorry. If the, if our custom is to stand for the reading of the word here. Acts chapter 27, verses 42 through 44. Those who are on our online churches, share, like, comment. Share, like, comment. You put your phone down. Share, like, comment. Share, like, and comment. Give, so. Join online. You still got a call, you know. You can't come to church. You're watching all over the seas. You're everywhere. Join. It's not easy to find your. They have online date night apps, right? Yes, sir. <laughs> they, got they got online date night. So they, they people be dating all across the states and meeting up. Join. So if you can do that then for, for your flesh, you sure can do it for your spirit. Amen. Amen. I'm out of here with that. The Acts 27, 42 through 44. And it reads as follows, and it says, And the soldiers' counsel was to kill the prisoners, lest any of them should swim out and escape. But the centurion willing to save Paul kept them from their purpose. And commanded that they which could swim should cast themselves first into the sea and get to land. And the rest some on boards and some on broken pieces of the ship. And so it came to pass that they escaped all safe to land. Yes. I want to talk for a few minutes of time from the topic or the theme designated survivor. Designated survivor. 
Come on, somebody, as you take your seat, somebody say, I'm a survivor. I'm a survivor. Designated survivor. Designated survivor. It says here, Pastor, the gospel writer Luke, he, he speaks and he says to us, and he says, and the soldier's counsel yes. was to kill the prisoners. Yeah. Lest any of them should swim out and escape. But the centurion willing to save Paul mm -hmm. kept them from their purpose and commanded that which could swim should cast themselves first into the sea and get to land. But then the rest, if you couldn't swim, you still gonna make it. Mm -hmm. Somebody say, I'm gonna still make it. I'm gonna still make it. One of the things that I've come to find in this time, Pastor, is that many of us, we are so hard and we've allowed people to be overly hard on us because of what are perceived uh, problems and, and our perceived uh, issues. And people are so easy to deflect. Mm. Have you ever been around deflectors? Deflectors, they, they got problems, but they don't, to get you off of their problem, they, they deflect about your problem. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. They, they, they talk about what's going on and looking at what is, what you're not doing. And many people, even in uh, growing churches, they, 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 they are made to feel bad a lot of times because they don't feel like they are measuring up to what everybody else is doing. Yes. But the reality is, is that, yes, they might have a fancier camera, but they still got the same percentage. Yeah. Oh my God. Come on. Yes. They may have a few, you know, they may have a few more subscribers and different things like that, but they still got the same percentage of faithfulness. Mm. They still got the same percentage of discipleship. But the issue for us is that we must begin to operate with our a new and a renewed thinking, whether with the church or whether the leader, where we can begin to operate and not look down on ourselves because I never learned to swim. Couldn't catch the rhythm of the stroke. I never learned how to do that, but it don't mean just because I couldn't swim that I was going to drown. Yeah. Somebody say, I ain't going out like that. You're not, just because you can't swim, it don't mean you don't have to drown. That's right. Yes. Man, I just thought about it years ago, years ago, years ago, when 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 uh, 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 Atia and, and, and her husband they they came down to the uh, to the city of Florida, uh, Orlando with us. We were at the we were at the water park, you know that water park with uh, with uh, Universal and all the other kind of thing. Yeah. What is it called? Wet and Wild, Wet and Wild, Wet and Wild, and, 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 and Wet and Wild. This big old huge water park at them, and, and so now they, they you know Kenneth couldn't swim. He couldn't swim. But Brianna, she thought she could swim. And as Brianna thought she could swim, she found herself getting pushed out by those huge waves into the deep end. Wow. Jesus. And the next thing she know is, oh my God, I'm way out here. Somebody say, God has put me way out here. Somebody say, somebody say, God has put me way out here. God's way, way out here. Yeah, yeah, your pastor, God is pushing way out here. You're pastoring, you're preaching, you're, you're doing this, you're doing that. You're your father, you're doing this, you're doing that. You're a leader's leader. You're doing this and you're doing that. And it seemed like, man, I ain't going to make it. Yes, it feels like it ain't gonna make it. So Brianna started hollering and screaming, and, and like, what in the world is going on? And then Kenneth never learned to swim. But Kenneth still went to get his sister. Yeah. Mm -mm -mm. yeah. And I, I still know to this day don't know how both of them got back here. Wow. A person that couldn't swim got back. Yeah. From out the deep water. My God, apostle. Come on, somebody understanding your own life. Somebody, you, you got to think about some of the stuff that you have made it through. Yeah. Yeah. That you know you should have died. My in. God. Yeah. You don't have anybody in this place that you have made it through some stuff that you know that you should have died in. Apostle. Oh, yes. Yes, sir. Yes. Somebody say designated survivor. Designated survivor. 
The centurion told them, they said, they told him, say, if you can swim, go for it. Right. And get to land. The rest of them, they had to, they, they, they could not look at themselves as less than. So many of us are looking at ourselves as less than. So many of us are, we're, we're, we're coming to church as less than. Than. Yeah. We, we say that we want this, that, and the third, but we are looking at ourselves as less than, and that is the limiting factor from us getting to the place that God wants us to get to in the moment that he wants us to get to. Come on, somebody say, no delay in this season. No delay. This is not the season of delay. Oh, this is not the season of delay. Oh, this is not. I know we all we often say delay don't mean deny, but this is not the season of being delayed. This is the season of being able to have a, a testimony of now that you can reap since you fainted not. Come on, somebody say, I ain't gave up. I ain't gave up. Oh, I ain't gave up. I ain't gave up. I ain't gave up. And so now that he told them to say, get on the boards and somebody need to get a bookie board and, and learn how to grab on to that thing and get to the place that God has called you. Even if it is something that is broken up. If you bleed, it don't mean you're going to bleed out. Oh, come on. Some of us have had some scars and some pain in our life. And some of us have had some negative things and some wrong stuff that have been said to us and about us in our life. Some of us have had to live through some things in our childhood that has been trying to track us into our 30s, 40s, and 50s in our life. But after all of those things that have come to try to hold us up and hold us captive, and yes, it did make us bleed, but now what after the bleeding is the time in our life that God will allow us to be able to know that I'm still going to make it. Come on, somebody, open up your mouth and say, I'm still going to make it. I'm still going to make it. I'm going to make it because God, in his infinite wisdom and his mercy, he has given me the ability to make it where I need to go. Amen. He gave me the ability to live through my Gethsemane moments. And he gave me the ability to live through my, uh, uh, my cross moments. He's given me the ability to live through my painful moments. Do I have anybody that can be real in here for just a few minutes of time? You know that you got some pain for moments that have happened in your life. You had some painful things that have happened in your life. But after all of those painful things that God still said, you are going to make it. One more time, open up your mouth and say, I'm going to make it. 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 Uh, now, see, this is, I want us, I, I really don't have a, 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 well, we're going to bump and shout a minute and everything, uh, but I, I, I do have a prophetic utterance uh, to release over our lives, uh, but especially you, sir. I have a, a prophetic word to release uh, over your life. Uh, God says, this is the season of strengthening for you. Uh, this is the season of strengthening for you in your life. Uh, this is the season of strengthening in your life so you can ready man to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Come on somebody, say I'm getting stronger. Come on sister, say I'm getting stronger. I'm getting stronger. I'm getting stronger in my life. Yes, you have been designated. You've been designated. to go through. Oh, I know that's a grown folks word right there. You've been designated to go through. Survivors have to go through. Because of the anointing of elevation that's on your life, that you, you can't see me now. You can't see me now. But because of the, because I'm doing this, y'all, can, can, can you see? Can, can you see? Come on, everybody point at Pat and say, we see you. We see you, Pastor. <laughs> come on, come on. Come on, hey, what's if you try to? Come on, everybody say, we see you. We see you, Pastor. Because of the anointing that's on your life, yeah. because of the elevation that's on your life, 
You have to. Understand that just because it's a season of attack, it don't mean it's not a season of survival. It don't mean just because it's a season of attack. Somebody got to stop allowing their mindsets to shift because you are, have been attacked. Yes. Somebody got to stop allowing their mind and their heart to shift and get all negative and get down and despondent and depressed because you have been attacked. Yes. What you should actually do for the believer is should give something on the inside of you yes. that say, I am so close. Come on, come on, somebody just say, I'm so close. Come on, say, I'm so close. Come on, say, I'm so close. Come on, say, I'm so close. You're so close to your blessing. You're so close to your miracle. You're so close to your change. You're so close to your transformation. You're so close. You are so close. You are so close. This is the season of your strengthening. This is the season of your strengthening. You got to understand, man of God. People of God, church, and I told you I'm almost done. But you got to understand that this is the time of strengthening in your life. This is the time of strengthening in your life. Life. What we found out this morning in John chapter 5, there was something that was trying to rob him from being able to go forward. But the reality of the matter is that when you are a designated survivor, time ain't nothing. Time ain't nothing. Time ain't nothing for you to be overly concerned about. I don't care if you're 84, you are not too old to be able to live in your purpose. I don't care if you're 6 and a half. You are not too old to live in your purpose. God is saying to each and every one of us that is in this place, those who are all alive, God is saying to you and I that we must understand that we still have purpose and we have the strength to be able to carry our faith. We have the strength to be able to carry what God has for us. We have the strength to be able to carry it. Come on, somebody, say, I'm going to carry this thing. Come on, say, I'm going to carry this thing. I'm going to carry this thing. I'm going to carry this thing. This is the season of strengthening in our life. This is the season of strength in our life. Come on, somebody, say, supernatural strength. Say, supernatural strength. Supernatural strength. Supernatural strength. Supernatural strength. Ship, and as he was down there in the bottom of 
the ship up, and it began to storm up, began to come up, that was in his life up, and it was in the disciples' life up, but why the storm began to come up, why the storm began to come up, come on, hey, let's go home here, now that the storm has came up, then we must understand that when that storm comes up, it don't mean that the ship is going to go down. God is saying to you, let just become the storm that began to come in your life. It was only for you and your character to be able to be built up. It was only for the power of God to be realized. Do you, anybody here, understand that when Jesus was on the cross, that was in the place uh, where the enemy brought us, that he had him, uh, but in the middle of uh, that particular situation, uh, that when power began to be uh, effectuated, uh, to have anybody uh, that's going to do something uh, in your life, uh, but why are you going to do that uh, when you stop looking back down at the ground? And we'll use what you to the heels up from you coming to help us. You have to get out of here. That's in your presence. That's who you understand. That's a few weeks ago. We saw us on Good Friday night. That everybody was talking about a better land. Paying the price. But the one we want to do is to get to the end. He's a factor. That's why he was there. He said in his hand, he gives it over to the Lord. Will you know that in your life, that God is saying that in the season and the time of your life, that it is the shifting time, you try to handle it upon your own. So everybody get on the feet, because we all know the way to get up out of here. God is saying to me, uh, and uh, I, uh, in our pride uh, of the flesh, uh, we are trying uh, to be ourselves uh, out of the mess. Uh, we are trying uh, to be ourselves uh, out of the problem. Uh, we are trying uh, to be ourselves uh, out of the circumstance. Uh, but guess what, uh, you got to know uh, that when you are uh, in victory, you must stop giving up and lay back up and let things up bring you up. You are anybody that in this church that can allow the power of God to raise you up. Can you have anybody that can allow the Holy Spirit to take you up? You have anybody in this place that will move up in a plain time? You have anybody that can move because they are ready to survive everything that they can do. Let's go higher and up. You have anybody that in this place that will be there to be just like that woman with the issue of love. You have anybody that will put it all on the line. Yes, he went through, but he was designated to pull down the first two rounds of the Lord. You have anybody that is going through, but they fall on Jesus Christ. Let's go higher and up. You have anybody that in this place that will let the God be God and your enemies be scattered. You have anybody in this place that's ready to ride out. Come on, somebody. Drop your finger on the shoulder and say, Come on, let's ride. Come on, let's ride. Come on, let's ride. Ride out. Come on, ride out. Let's go. Let's go, somebody. Come on, somebody. Let's go up in our favor. Let's go up in our worship. And give my glory Because Christ is on the other side Give the glory to the body Come on somebody, give the glory Come on somebody, give the praise Come on somebody, give the praise 